Coventry United TV interviews are proudly sponsored by Current. Building bespoke software to increase sales and improve your business process. Visit current.it for more information. Following a tense victory over Watford in the FA Women's National League Cup, Jay Bradford joins us for the final whistle. Jay, congratulations on a fantastic victory. But those last few minutes couldn't have been very comfortable for you. No, I think we, um, we made it slightly harder work than I think we needed to. I think we'd have just put our foot on the ball and moved it as we had done for sort of 75, 80 minutes. I think we'd have seen the game out comfortably at 3-1, but obviously, you know, they're throwing the kitchen sink at us and I think we just we retreated slightly deeper than I would have liked us to. Well, the first half was a 45 minutes of patient play from both sides. That, that seemed to go out the window after half-time. Where was that? It's a, you know, it's a cup game. Everybody wants to win, so I think the tempo goes up slightly, but that also sometimes means the quality comes down. Um, and I think it was just a case of both teams trying to find their rhythm but not quite getting there. Um, and as I said, you know, they, they were always going to throw the kitchen sink at us as the game ticked on. Um, I thought foremost goal to make three one was a wonderful strike. Um, and at that point, I thought we'll control it now and we'll be okay. But we, like I say, we, we just dropped slightly deeper than I would have liked us to, and I think that that just invited Watford on. The second half started with two quick fire goals, as you said, a wonder goal from Jade, but we'll get onto that a little bit later. But what was that the plan, to hit hard after the break? Yeah, you know, you always want to come out, especially on a day like seven, it's freezing, it's wet and stuff. You want to come out on the front foot because it's, you know, you've sat inside 15 minutes and stuff. So you always, you always want to come out at a tempo that suits you rather than that suits the opposition. So I felt we did that. I, I, thought we, I thought we started the game and we started the second half very well. Well, the rain certainly didn't make things easy for, uh, for both sides, but how did it affect the red and green girls? Um, I mean, you know, it's a bit of rain, you know, it's, it's not going to kill us. We're, um, You're all right. Yeah, you know, we, we came out to warm up and it was it was pretty torrential and I just said to the girls, like, you know, just get your rain jackets on, let's get going and just, you've almost just got to forget about it and you've just got to do do the things that you can to, to overcome things like that and, you know, the middle of the park was getting a little bit boggy, there was a bit of standing water. So I just said play with your heads and don't, don't try and play in those areas where it is a oh, little bit wetter, just try and get it out and use the channels because they were you know much drier than the centre of the pitch. We've got to talk about that goal from Jade Brook. I mean she doesn't score tappings does she? She doesn't. Um, yeah she's for me she's she's been outstanding you know I've been sort of I think this is my third maybe my fourth season now here and she's she gets better season after season and that's because she's she always wants to learn and she always wants to know what she can improve on. Um, and I think she, I think she scored eight in eight. I think that is. I think that goal takes her to that tally. So, you know, she hit it and it got it got stuck in the top corner of the net. And she looked at me. She said, "Does that count?" And I said, "Yes, it does." Um, so yeah, you know, I'm, I'm really pleased for her. I think she's she's grafted and she's she's added goals to her game, which was the next step for her really. And I think you know, no keeper's going to save that. Well, you can see how she's stepped up this season. As you say, eight goals, eight games. She's been player of the match. I think about three times so far. I mean, and she was player of the month as well for yeah. September. I mean, it couldn't have been anyone else, could it? No, of course it couldn't. And you know, um, you know, she has been that good. She and she deserves all those plaudits. And when she plays on the front foot, and she, she, you know, she starts to rattle shots from sort of 30, 35 yards. You always stand a chance of winning games. And I hope that she continues in that in that form. And obviously, each week that she gets better and better, which I think she can do. You know, she's still got another gear. And I'm always pushing her, and the staff always pushing her for more. And I know Joe's worked with her on a few things to improve her game and luckily for us, she takes it on board and she implements it so but I think she's also added a bit of a leadership quality this year you know she's vice captain which is a big role because you know Sue's obviously away with the goalkeepers and stuff so she's not always in and around the team so foremost massive for that um, and she's taken that on board and I think you can see that I think she looks like she's enjoying her football which for me is great. Former's goal was certainly a highlight, but just a few minutes after that, it was a, a rather tough moment for young Erin Ridden with the own goal. But that won't keep a, a resilient player like her down, will it? No, of course it won't. You know, it, it's one of them. I think she's. I'm not. I mean, I need to see it again, but I'm not sure whether she was caught in two minds to just put a foot through it or whether it just bounced off. I'm not quite sure. Like I said, I need to look at it again. But you know, she, she's been out injured for a little while and she's she's rehabbed really well. And she came back in and I thought she she looked spot on. You know, she keeps the ball very well. Um, and she adds a quality, so yeah, you know, those things happen. I mean, I've, even I've scored own goals, um, but it does, it happens, and she's, you know, she'll move on quickly, so I'm not, I'm not worried about her. It certainly set up a tense finish here at uh, Kings Langley. Watford piled on the pressure towards the end of the game with the score at 3 2. How do you think the Red and Green's defence handled that bombardment from Watford? 
yeah, you know, we had a we had a few scary moments where the ball sort of flashed across the box and stuff, but overall, you know, we dealt with it and I think we were intelligent when we did get the ball, we, we played in good areas and you know, Maz in the last minute's bombing down into the corner and she's got a foot on the ball, so yeah, I thought I thought we handled that sort of five or six minute period as well as we could have. And finally, after watching that, are you confident that you can repeat the feat in the league against Watford next week? I mean, I've said it before, I'd back my team against anybody, you know, I don't, I don't manage a squad that I don't trust and I trust this squad and I trust the staff to prepare us this week and that we go into next week in the same form that we started today, but, you know, Watford are probably going to go away and look at their footage and say, you know, we've scored two goals, so we know that we, know that we can cause them problems, but, you know, we, we, but today was an opportunity for both teams to see each other before next week, so... I'm, I've said, I said it in the week, neither team would have wanted this fixture, but it happens, that's football and I think next week we just need to prepare in the right way and, and play our game and I think when we do that, you know, like I said, back us against anybody.